So I was sent the script uh, through my company, Denver and Delilah. They were uh, really hoping we would produce it and that, that maybe I should consider playing Megyn Kelly. The first part to that was really an, a no-brainer for us. I mean, it was just instantly, um, we just knew that the script written by Charles Randolph was spectacular. We, we were expecting something good, something great, and we, the script just so surpassed that. It's really just a well-written script, very timely, the subject matter, so, and, and just a great opportunity for a lot of talented women to come together and tell an important story. So all of those things were really exciting. And then, you know, I had to finally like <laughs> sit down with myself and, and think how could I even wrap my head around, you know, playing this woman that's incredibly well known, has a very specific sound to her, look to her. She's controversial. She, um, she's complex. Jay Roach, our filmmaker who ended up directing this, and also our producer, he was really the one that kind of like, he gave me that extra little push just over the end line. Um, I trust him immensely. He's a friend of mine. I think he has incredible creative taste. Um, I love his work. Um, but I think more than anything, I felt incredibly safe with him. And I felt like if he w was at the helm of this, that I would, I would push myself in a way where it was maybe more risky, but with him I would, I would feel safe to do that. Today I think we look at these stories and we see how universal they are, because we're hearing more about them. And the conversation is, it's in the news, people are talking about it. And how nice to go back to the, the people who actually catapulted us into this, because really this was the first of its, of its kind. It was a, a year and maybe a half later, it was Harvey Weinstein. So this was a very, this was the precipice of it. And it was a really important moment. And to have all of this noise around it is really great. You know, it's, it's undeniable. It's a story that people cannot ignore anymore. And then how do you do that in a way where you can go and watch it in a theater and enjoy yourself? Be, be devastated, be angry, be mad but also laugh at the, the absurdity that this is even happening. Nicole Kidman plays Gretchen Carlson and was just unbelievable um, in her commitment and her hard work and just how much she wanted to support this film just blew me away. And you know, there was a time when we had to maybe even push the film and I called her and I was dreading this phone call of saying like, are you going to just leave? And she's like, I'm not leaving you, Charlize. I'm, I'm right behind you. I have your back. And that was incredibly moving to have that kind of support from women. And when he initially brought him up, I just I had this moment where I went, that is so wrong that that is so right. It was just so out of the box casting. And Jay is so good at that. And instantly we all just went, we would have never come up with that, but that is brilliant because ultimately, you want an actor to be able to, first of all, step into a story that's not focused on him, but really focused on the female perspective, and that already is a heart feat. So to get a guy who has the kind of heart and soul and this kindness and generosity that, that, that John Lithgow House has is, is already like 50% of it, right? And we knew that he would come and support all of that. But outside of that, he was just a great ales. Like once he got into hair and makeup and came out and the amount of research he did and he, this angle that he came from yet again that I was so, I was so proud of, you know, he never shied away from the fact that this guy, Roger Ailes was incredibly charismatic and that people loved him. We shot the elevator scene, I would say uh, in the middle of the film of shooting maybe a little bit more towards the end. And so by then, I think all of us, all three of us, Margot and Nicole and I, had a little bit more of a, 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 a foothold on what we were doing, and I think we felt a little bit more confident. Um, and so I think that moment where we're all three in the elevator and the, how much we're communicating without really saying anything, I think Nicole says three words in the elevator. I don't know how strong that would have been if we had scheduled that earlier in the film. I think there was something that was just kismet, it was serendipitous that we had had that much shooting, 
to be able to just fully stand in our characters and have that be the story and, and, and have that telegraph as much as it did. But it also is just, it, it says so much about Margot and Nicole. That's just, they are powerhouses. And I was just literally trying to keep up. Because when you work with that kind of, that level of actor, you, you gotta bring your A game. The bar is set pretty high.